All right, guys, today we're going to be definitely ruffling some feathers. And I think it's just interesting because every so often I come across some un unenlightened trolls and truly some people that live under the bridge. And that is in regards to the knives that you guys are going to see right now. And now these knives, and I have this little Emerson Bulldog here kind of peeking its head out because we'll talk about Emerson too. But really, I want to talk about the three real knife makers makers, greatest knife makers of all time. And I feel like I've talked about this a handful of times, but I just feel like I have to comment it every time or at least continue to make videos, maybe expressing in more kind of enlightening um, people in the knife community, because I feel like from where I came from, or at least, um, you know, when I got into the knife world, these three knives that you guys see here, the Strider SNG, the Hinder XM18 3.5 inch in particular, and the CRK or Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza, maybe the Sabenza 21, I feel like is probably the like one itself. But um, these three knives right here are really what makes up the true benchmarks for high end and quality and really useful EDC knives in particular. Now, there might be a little bit more tactical leaning. I think honestly with all three of these knives, especially the fact that this is a Tonto version, but either way, either way you slice it, these three knives in particular are what really make up the benchmark or in my opinion, define the line of high end knives. And I recently came across a post that was, I don't know, semi-inflammatory where, you know, people might be fishing for commentary on it anyways, but you know, they were talking about how, you know, Hinderer is a garbage tier company. They, you know, think that Strider is for, you know, people that um, want to be pretend military or they continue to bring up the fact that you know Strider Mick Strider himself you know was a you know a fake he faked his military career and you know regardless to what we think of anyone's personal life because I think that this is the really you know fascinating point is that you know a lot of people sit there and they like to dig up the dirt behind the creators of these knives but then they sit there and they don't mention any of the dirt on any of the people like Koenig um, with their Arius. They don't mention, you know, Grismo with their, you know, Norsemen. You know, they don't like to talk about their precious knife companies or knife makers. And I'm not trying to sit here and say that, you know, Koenig is a horrible company and that their owner is, you know, a bastard or something like that. I honestly don't know um, anything really about the Koenig, you know, like founder and, you know, like the people in their personal life. And that's because when I look at products as a whole, I'm really not looking at the particular owners of their respective companies. I also think too, there is a very differing philosophy. I think in the modern knife community, people are far more used to getting pampered and you know treated to the best or you know being treated um, like the customer is never wrong. When unfortunately, as, as is the case, sometimes the customer really is wrong. And so anyways, um, when it comes down to it, you know, I think a lot of people sit there and they bemoan their poor treatment um, from these companies as an automatic fault of either the owner or as an automatic fault of the company. So I'm not sure that's always true, but I will say, I think a lot of people sit there and they talk a big game of against, like I said, companies like Hinder, like Strider, not really Chris Reeve, because honestly, Chris Reeve's pretty, pretty good. But in my opinion, they do have their own troubled past. And like I said, if you look at it, you know, humans are humans, right? Like, you know, Chris Reeve isn't even involved in the company that legitimately bears his name anymore, or at least not officially involved like he's no longer the CEO of his company you know his ex-wife um, took over the company um, between her and her son or their son um, they're the ones that actually run the, the show now so I mean when you look at it you know all of these companies are fallible all of them whenever you dig into them have their amount of dirt and if you look at a modern company like I said like Grismo for instance you know when when you look at that company you're like oh but they're so much better and they take care of their com or their customers so much more well or whatever you'd like to say is really probably because Grismo is pretty new to the game. You know, people like Koenig are pretty new to the game. Shiro, new to the game. And so when you sit there and you look at a company, especially once again, Chris Reeve, who, you know, the, the very first, you know, Chris Reeve um, Sabenzas that came out, came out in the early 90s, like for production to purchase, you know, these things came out in the early 90s. So when we're looking at it, 
looking at it, these are nearly, if not already, 30 year old, you know, companies. And so, you know, and naturally life goes on, owners, you know, change um, their lives and that happens with anyone. And I think that it's really unfortunate as a large, like just kind of overarching commentary, I think it's very um, unfortunate when people look at other humans just because they're the owners or you know representatives of a particular company and they look at them with a certain prejudice because realistically we all have our own dirt we all have skeletons in our closets so to speak right no, no one's squeaky clean and so to sit there and be like oh you know strider you know faked their military career so we don't support them anymore would be as convoluted and silly as saying that you know because chris reeve is no longer a part of the company that legitimately bears his name you know, I'm not buying any more Chris Reeves. Like, you're welcome to do that and you're welcome to say that, but that doesn't change the fact that it's still a good product. Like, you're honestly missing out on a lot of good by being petty or being, honestly, I think what a lot of it comes down to is that you, they just don't understand. There's a lot of ignorance, especially in the knife forums, and that's why I don't honestly tend to participate in the knife forums as much anymore um, outside of buying and selling and trading, uh, just because, like I said, there's a lot of ignorance ignorance in the, the community and there's a lot of boisterous um, commentary by people who, you know, they'll sit there and be like, the real Holy Trinity is the Koenig Arius, the Chris Reeve knife, Sabenza, and, you know, some other random knife that probably is insignificant. And then they, they, you actually talk to them and the most they own is, you know, some Gucci, you know, limited edition bench made bug out. Like they, they don't even actually own these knives. Like that's, I think the part, the part that makes me laugh the most is like they sit there and like you guys don't even own these actual knives. Like, you know, it's funny when people like sit there and talk trash, you know, while they, the highest or the nicest knife they own is, you know, a really nice $200 bench made bug out. Like you guys don't even actually own the 500 600 700 dollar knives so i'm not gonna sit here and you know like say that because i do own these knives you guys don't know what you're talking about but in a way i kind of am gonna say that because once again unless you've actually experienced a hinderer like unless you've actually experienced a strider like you you don't really know and so baselessly you know blaming the company's owner for some you know lies or transgressions is really just a poor in my opinion, like a really poor way to live. And so anyways, these guys are some of the best knives you'll really ever experience. And in my opinion, if you are dedicated to knives, if you enjoy knives for what they are um, and you want to take them to the next level and really enjoy like the highest level of, or what I would, maybe not the highest level, but like what I would consider the benchmark for, um, you know, quality knives, I would still recommend checking out the original holy trinity of knives, and that is the Strider SMG, the Hinderer XM18, and the Chris Reeve knives, Sabenza, preferably the 21. I know 21s are no longer being made, so they're a little bit difficult to find, but I think that the 21 is in my opinion, probably the best one that you can get because it's the most heritage inspired. Like unless you can find a true classic Sabenza, um, this is probably the closest you'll realistically be able to get to that. And I think it blends the most of the classic heritage where it doesn't have the double lugs. It's not trying to be ambidextrous. It's just a plain, simple, classic design. And so for me, in my opinion, these are the finest, or maybe, like I said, I don't want to say the finest, but the benchmark for what a fine knife should be. And like I said, I have this little, you know, Emerson hanging out in the corner here. This is a little Emerson Bulldog, but I think Emerson's another one that really is worth checking out. And I think that, in my opinion, what honestly becomes more attractive about these knife companies, once again, Hinder, Strider, um, <clears throat> Chris Reeve, Emerson, uh, is that as the world pushes towards limited drops, um, sprint runs, and you know, just these kind of hype beast kinds of mannerisms and thought processes, that these older companies, they, right, wrong, or indifferent, they really stick to their guns. Like, you know, 
Emerson, for instance, and once again, not to hype them up, but Emerson, you know, doesn't even work with knife resellers or retailers, I guess you could call them. And so they don't even work with knife retailers anymore. Now, once again, there's maybe some other reasons as to why they don't, but one of the reasons is they don't like the treatment of different knife retailers. And I think that that really goes to show, like, you know, with a lot of companies like ProTech, you know, out here dropping, you know, Blade HQ exclusives, Benchmade doing the same, you know, there's this push to hype beast kind of culture that I think Emerson is flying in the face of. Now, Strider is a little bit different, but I don't think Strider honestly intends to lean in on or try to make bank off of using hyped up steels. Like you haven't seen a Strider SMG dropped in Magna Cut, right? You haven't seen a Hinderer. Well, actually, I can't say that. They have dropped one in Magna Cut, but they don't honestly lean. Like most of these knives really don't lean towards the hype or the you know trendiness at least not in the moment like some of the first knife companies to release magna cut knives spider co bench made you know they're really trying to capture that you know enigma of the newest latest technology and so these knives and these companies really stick to their guns they stick to their principles once again emerson still rocking 154 cm you know the old same old steel that they've had for decades and that's just who they are right and so I think if you want companies that are really flying in the face of conventional notion, these are really honest to God, good companies to go with, regardless to what people say about their treatment, because I think a lot of it is fair. And I've dealt with hinderer myself, and I've had to order parts for my hinderers throughout the years, because um, things like screws and stuff like that get lost and it's natural. And to be honest, I've never had unfair treatment from them, and I have had to pay for the replacement parts but they've always outlined that and said hey this is it and honestly most of the time for replacement parts it's like you know a dollar two dollars like it's not like oh we're gonna make you pay fifty dollars for a new lock bar and sorry sorry lock bar insert if i can english um and so like it's like two dollars right so very reasonable price is really just enough to co cover the cost of shipping and so um you know i think like in my experience with a lot of these companies it's always been fair and reasonable and uh yeah but they are you know, old, older school companies. And I think of it a lot like when dealing with, especially Hinder and Strider, because they are a little bit older school and Emerson, it's a lot like walking into an old school kind of gun shop where a lot of people nowadays, you walk into a sporting goods store, a gun store, and you know, all the guns are behind the counter. You can't see anything unless you, you know, they like card you or ID you to make sure you're actually of the age to even handle guns. And you know, they hand it to you without the magazine and all of these different things that like growing up and even when there's still a few a handful of good old-fashioned gun stores uh, left at least where I live and you walk into there and you know there's just rifles just racks of rifles the moment you walk in you can grab a gun you don't need permission you don't need you know all of this shenanigans or modern day kind of you know hoops so to speak and honestly like that's that's the way I like it. I like these old school companies where, you know, the owners are a little rough around the edges, but they are passionate about what they do. And at the end of the day, if you are a straight shooter, you won't have problems. Like if you are a genuine person, you won't have problems with these companies. Now, if you go to them, once again, like the old school gun shops, if you go to them and you're looking to start problems, then you'll find problems. But if you go to them as a true, genuine human, you're not going to have any issues. And so in my opinion, um, that's the way I look at these old school knife companies. Um, and I say old school just because, like I said, like Chris Reeve and Strider and such, they've been around for decades. And so they're not necessarily buck or case knife or knives, you know, old school, but these guys are not, um, you know, the brand new like Hogue knives. These aren't like, you know, a lot of the other brands like ProTech and others that I cover on this channel. These are older school companies and I think they carry that old school kind of mindset to them. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this kind of explains why I think these knife companies are the best of the best. And honestly, they still set the benchmark, in my opinion, for quality high-end knives. And realistically, you know, a lot of these knives require some break-in and some actual use before they become very smooth. But like this Chris Reeve knife, Sabenza 21, it's a glassy smooth blade. There's no bearings in here. There's nothing special. 
It's just a really good blade and it takes a while to break in and make it good. And you guys can see here too, my Strider as well is drop shoddy as well. And once again, it doesn't run on bearings. It's not special. It's not all hypey, you know, it's just a good old school hard use knife. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless.